right. Very exciting day today. We are welcoming a guest, our first guest into the studio since we got new cameras and new lighting, and we appreciate you all bearing with us. We were a couple minutes late because of all that. It is Drea DiMatteo. She is, of course, the Soprano star canceled. We're going to talk about her cancellation, and uh, we're going to talk about her OnlyFans and her survival through cancellation and why she only had $10 or $100 or $1,000 in the bank during a successful run in a show. It doesn't matter if it's $10 or $1,000. When you don't know what it's like to be canceled, you have to find ways to survive. And you can follow Drea at, at Drea DiMatteo. It's two Ts, at Drea DiMatteo. And uh, we're going to get into all of this, and I'll be watching you on the restream. So put your comments there, and I'll be watching uh, out for everybody on the Twitter spaces. I don't know if we'll be able to take calls, but uh, we'll see the best... We'll do the best we can. My crack producer, Susan, is <laughs> playing the show live. Uh, it's probably a, feeding back for I you. I have an old uh, computer, and it doesn't have the mute button. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. We'll be right back after this with Dre Mateo. Our laws, as it pertain to substances, are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? Uh, I'm just saying. You go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Let's talk about aging because everyone wants to know how to slow it down. For almost a decade, I've been taking a healthy aging supplement called True Niagen. This supplement boosts NAD. That's something that cells can't live without. It's done with a patented form of nicotinamide riboside called NR or Niagen. It's more efficient and more scientifically reviewed than NMN or other NAD boosters. True Niagen is truly the best way to boost NAD levels. And it's made by Chromadex. They are the gold standard in the NAD space. Dr. Charles Brenner, the scientist who discovered the NAD boosting potential of NR, explains. And the center of the metabolism that allows the conversion of food into energy is NAD coenzymes. And NAD gets disturbed um, in the aging process. And as we're exposed to conditions of metabolic stress, mm. niagen, which is the... Um, form of, of NR that was developed by Chromadex is the, is the best and the only fully legal form of NR. And this is really the gold standard for NAD boosting uh, vitamins. I love this product. I urge you to try it. Go to drdrew.com slash true for 20% off your order. That is drdrew.com slash true niagen, T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N, and enter Dr. Drew at checkout, D-R-D-R-E-W, Enter it at the checkout for 20% off. All right. Entering the free speech zone here is Drea DiMatteo. David, watch out. I, I, I know. <laughs> you watch out. Uh, I, I'm watching out. You, you're, you are free to speak your mind, young lady. Uh, and uh, and I know we were, before the mics heated up, we were sort of uh, chatting about how this is so uncomfortable for you. You know, you went into the business of acting you intended to perform and all of a sudden your personal medical sort of um your your literally your body integrity got you fired and now what well i, well, I mean i actually wasn't even canceled i canceled myself before i i wasn't even working anywhere at the time i just decided to opt out you know more listen now we're being aligned with all kinds of weird labels and you, names you you're a far right mega extremist yes, i guess because that, you didn't want yes, a vaccine 100% we'll get to that even later but um, it, how insane is that it's insane yeah. i mean if we, to, <laughs> so to go against authoritarianism somehow is to the right isn't that weird? Yeah, because I that, just thought that was classical liberalism. I think um, was it Johnny Rotten was coming out saying the singer from the Sex Pistol. Uh, 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 yeah, he, yeah, he was saying you if you want to be punk rock, you have to be conservative now or something like I that. I did see that interview. That was about two years ago too yeah. that he did that, and everyone just kind of. Well, he wasn't <laughs> even talking about the vaccine. I know he was just talking about everything. Yes, he you know? was. 
Um, but for me, I, I mean, yeah, to be having to speak about stuff, I, I've never been someone who ever did any press. I never did many interviews, no talk shows for sure. But, By the way, um, the dog is actively farting under the table here for <laughs> us. So, so, I don't smell so it. this is this is one of the things farts. you had not anticipated in bringing people into our studio. Wait Susan. a minute, so. I, it's, you're you're in good hands. I love dog farts. Well, this, these are pretty impressive. Farts. I'm not even sure who's doing it, it but, I, but, but here's I, the thing: I don't it's going smell, my way. I don't smell my kids' farts, and ah. everyone is always like opening the car door, and I'm like, it's fine. I don't smell it. Who cares? Yeah, like, yeah. You can't. I don't smell the dog's farts. Okay, good. Well, so we're good. I wish that I did though. <laughs> I, I love a good happen. dog fart. It still could happen. So. So here we go. Um, I'm a way different guest for you than most of your no, guests. No, no, sure. no. You're more um, like our friends, frankly. So it's all good. <laughs> but but back to that the 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 policies that SAG maintained. I actually ran for a. I didn't want to do it, but I was sort of encouraged to run for one of the board positions and saying, because they don't have medical people making decisions anywhere. I said, look, let me offer my services. I, I have some ability to make these decisions and you should have, you should be taking advice from somebody within the community who has your best interest in heart before you make these crazy decisions. And no one really was worse than SAG. I, I mean, they were amongst the worst in terms of their weird lockdown policies. Oh, really? Just See, I just, didn't even oh, pay attention to it. It's ridiculous. Well, was it SAG that that I mean, no, because I mean, all the all of the unions made. The, I mean, listen, yes, it trickled yes, they did. down from. I mean, I think after watching a few of your shows, I had no idea that you were, you know, full on freedom fighter at this point. A, a radical, radical <laughs> you know? MAGA, yeah, whatever. I didn't know that you were a supremacist. I, 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 now. I'm a white supremacist. Is that a part of my deal? But, uh, uh, okay, great. You have to be right. I mean, if you I, uh, if you care about liberal. body sovereignty. Co I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, we're no, making No, uh, that's the but. point. That is the point, is that not just body sovereignty, but practice of medicine sovereignty. I mean, I, I will defend my peers' right to practice what they think is in the best interest of their patient. And by the way, if, they, if they're if they way outlying for some reason, it's not even the Board of Medical Quality Assurance that should be determined. It should be the professional societies stepping in and asking for a defense of what a doctor is doing. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I feel like... I mean, you know this, that it's just all at the, it's all at the very top and it was all weaponized and none of it even was about medical integrity. I don't think anything was about any kind of integrity. There was an agenda and it, it, it seems out. like it. it, it seems like it. I think it was complicated, right? I, I've looked at it pretty carefully and at the core, there was an hysteria yeah. and there were sort of circumstances afoot that very few of well, I didn't understand, like most doctors are employees and the power of bureaucracy and its inability to make sound risk or any risk reward analysis, nor change direction, nor admit when they're wrong. This was all mind boggling to me. And and there was, let's be fair, there was an unclear emergency to begin with. I mean, it's it's it's, it's at once possible to say hey, the vaccines did some good in the beginning, and what are we doing now, <laughs> right? You can right. say that. Or And by the way, even though it did good in the beginning, a young, healthy person doesn't want to take the vaccine. Why is that anybody's business except your doctor? Well, how did you feel? I, mean, I want to interview you. I want yeah, to go. ask Dr. Drew. Please. I am going to ask questions. I want yes. to ask you questions Let's right go. now. Let's go. Okay, wait, are you vaccinated? Um, I had bad COVID. At the time in which I got, and that was the Alpha or Delta time, which there was a nasty illness, right? Yeah. And at the time, I got it running around the hospital where I practiced for 40 years trying to get the vaccine. And they wouldn't get me the vaccine. They wouldn't give me the vaccine because I wasn't in the right risk category in spite of I'm taking thinking. care of COVID patients. You forget about this part where if you didn't come from a certain area which legitimately had added risk, they, they couldn't think through, oh, you take care of COVID patients, and if we lose you, you won't be available to take care of COVID patients. It was just, no, you don't come from this part of town, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I was running around the hospital trying to get an exception, couldn't get it. Three days later, COVID. Uh, and it was bad. Um, and at the time, interesting thing, what, what jumped out at me was, oh, my God, I have COVID, and no one has, uh, even I, have have like not been talking about what you do when you get COVID. There's yeah. things to do to make this thing far less risky than it was at the time. So what was your question? I, 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 I was petrified when I got it. 
Oh, oh, that was so, the first so, question. All right, but, so so I had full immunity. I actually was, I had a I was working for a company that did this thing called Aditex Score, which was a full immunity profile. I showed the neutralizing antibodies. I mean, I, I was immune, um, but we were going to Europe that summer, oh, and uh, God, get you with that. Yeah, and we couldn't go to Europe unless I took the vaccine. So I took the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Oh, you're I, fine then. And look at this. Look at that picture right there. I woke up in the morning after the Johnson Johnson with what's called a raccoon eye. I swear I didn't do it. That's a it's a black eye, spontaneous black eye, which is the presenting feature of the transverse sinus thrombosis that was the dreaded complication of the J and J that was killing people. So I looked in the mirror that morning. I was like, Oh, here we go. And by the way, it, at that point, it only happened in women. And I thought I'm like. Oh, perfect. I'm the only male that's going to get the major complication. Wait, I didn't know this. It was a sinus thrombosis? You have you have these giant veins in your skull that drain blood. And it's called, the, the, there's called a, mm, put the, put the um, calvarial sinuses. Put, put that up there for me, Caleb. Uh, and we'll give a little anatomy but lesson. All of to that, that thrombosis and stuff. I was thinking more. It was, you know, like a DVT or or it, it, that could happen too. But the but it was presenting with with transverse sinus thrombosis for some reason, and uh, and that's that sinus clots and it puts pressure in the eye, and so the eye from the cavernous sinus behind the eye gets purple. And yeah, the other thing about the transverse sinus thrombosis, it causes it's associated with brainstem strokes. strokes. Yeah. yeah, you say that word again. Uh, what's that, Caleb? How do you, what, where that? <laughs> Calvar, cal, calvarial, calvaria, calvarial venous sinuses. Oh, calvarial wow. venous sinuses. Let's see if we can get it up there. Wow. Just have, how about skull venous sinuses? Or whatever you just had me Google, it popped up with like medical diagrams of, of uh, male genitalia. <laughs> so free. thank you, Drew. Skull no, venous I don't thrombosis. Know. Cal, <laughs> skull or, or occipital <laughs> skull thromb, venous sinuses. Venous sinuses of the skull, something like that. Wow! And uh, not, um, not the penis. My <laughs> um, I took my uh, nanny who I ra who raised me, who I raised. I raised her later when she had a heart transplant. I started taking oh care of goodness. her. So I wouldn't. How old um, was she? She died in my house at eighty. How old was she? Eighty three. How old was she when she got or transplanted? Eighty seven. Transplanted. She was in her fifties. I. Oh think. my god! And th so you know, this is the thing I worry about with the young males and the vaccine right now, right? My, the dreaded complication of myocarditis is what she had, and we know that enlarged, enlarged, enlarged heart, heart. Um, uh, damaged muscle. And I'm still waiting for you, Caleb, to pull up that pull up that picture uh, if trying. you can. All right, um, and. Uh, and it, it, look, we don't know yet if these kids that get these injuries are going to have that problem per se, but there's a real risk yeah. for it. And there's no risk of COVID. I mean, right. yes, COVID, I'm, you know, I, I was aware that COVID was uh, active in the heart when I got COVID and I was, had a fever of 103 and I was climbing the stairs over here in the house and I took my pulse and it was 60. Yeah. And too. I went, I went, oh, this is messing with the heart for sure. Yeah. Um, but so yes, COVID causes injury to the heart too, but. When this current COVID, the Omicron, is nothing. It's it's just zero right. for a young, healthy adult. It's a zero as opposed to a one in fifteen or one in ten or one in five thousand, whatever it is, chance of myocarditis. That that's no, no Can bueno. You see it on ah, this mm. image anywhere? Oh. Yeah, it actually looks better when you're that. That is the. It's really not you it. Like a front but view? it does sit on it. It does sit on top of that thing. I if you can get a a, a view from the. You can't really see it. If you get a uh, just the, the from the if you took the skull off, like the the top of the skull, and then looked inside it, that's what we're really looking for. That looks so. like a good T-shirt for us, right there. <laughs> that's our <laughs> new T-shirt. Right go there. do Let's it. Well, it. tell us about the clothing company. Tell us about it. Let's do. Um, let's promote oh, that. For, uh, ultra free. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, there's people saying we stand with you, Drea. This oh, is good. thanks, guys. Because a lot of people like to call me the a hooker, and now I am the hooker. I've coined myself the hooker of Hollywood, yeah. and now Robbie's been coined a um, white supremacist. Oh, by his really? Fans. What did you do to gain that? Uh... Um, his. We the company with skulls on it. You did what? We started a t-shirt company with skulls on it. 
Oh, skulls. So, I see. So the skulls on the T-shirt. Show me the T-shirt. So this, our, this is the T-shirt. This whole, the whole thing with us is how it how it was born <laughs> was that we lost everything. It's hashtag ultra free people are putting up there. So oh, people thanks, are into it. So they, they know what Thank this you. is. You have you have a loyal following. My, our well, they're, following I, might have. You lost everything because you didn't take the vaccine. I lost everything because I held out. I, I consumed information as much as I could about what was going on. It didn't sit right with me. I felt like the whole thing was, it was were, just all very suspect. I was, was scared. Your Hollywood jobs and your, your But this is TV interesting. Well, in the lockdown, and- though. In the lockdown, I, I really was like, hold on. This, this so how wrong. are they managing to close down the entire world? Right. 9-11 was one thing. Something oh, there's, happened. There's your stuff. Boom. Oh, yeah, that one. People think it says defend Satanism. What does it say? But it says defund Satanism. <laughs> and what's funny about that shirt is Robbie's band. He's uh, His band is um, All Them Witches. They uh, he, he does all the artwork and all the merchandising for that band. And it's all, you know, skeletons and demonic looking little creatures and things and like bats. that. Now... They don't like us or him. Some Who doesn't? Of them. They? Like Who's maybe, the they? Maybe four fans. Maybe okay. four fans have, have bitched him out about the gun. Oh, I love um, this. This the is what I picked. The because old- of the gun. Oh. Which is funny to me because it's okay to have demonic looking characters on a t shirt. Those things are okay. But a gun and a cross are definitely not okay. But the gun, I mean, if we look at the history of rock and roll, I mean, are, are people using pillows as their their logos, like little hearts? And I mean, Guns and Roses, Velvet Revolver, go, Sex Pistols. Go look at the early footage of um, the Osbournes, oh. and as they're going around their house, you will see all kinds of shit like that I all know. over the place. Oh, it's my favorite band. <laughs> oh, I mean, Black Sabbath's my favorite band of all time. But um, it's you funny to be a hippie, and then all of a sudden, you're the person who is. I mean, it's bizarre. You know what's I mean, interesting? You you consider yourself a hippie? Yeah, but not the psyop hippie. I mean, like a real, like a like a classic liberal. Well, you yeah, know? but but a lot of the hippies, like Corolla and I talk about this all the time because his mom was a hippie. A lot of the hippies from the seventies had deep, seething rage under their hippiness. You don't have that. Which is interesting. No, you have a, a you have a desire for f- just to leave people alone, and they leave you alone, right? Yeah, but I think we've all gone through, you know, being enraged about certain things. I, I think, and then you get older, and you have kids, and you're like, wow, <laughs> where'd, where'd we you really need to promote love. Where'd you grow up? Well, um, Queens first. I was born in Queens, and then I grew up in Manhattan, Whitestone. Like under the Whitestone Bridge, oh my there's gosh, a neighborhood f- called yes. Malba that was super mafia. Oh, fantastic! And uh, yeah. is that what informed your character? Yes. Did very you have family much. in the in the? Yeah. When when uh yeah I st- my my grandma ended up living there until she died and mm. we lived in her house mostly. Mm. So we all lived together like a big Italian crazy cooking. Here's family. a picture from The Sopranos. Oh yeah, I remember those days. It's that like must, it was yesterday. No one forgets about it ever. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was really one of the great shows of all time, right? People yeah. love that show. Is that Christopher? No, that's Silvio. Oh, Silvio. <laughs> that one's Silvio. He kills me. Oh, oh right. Is this the ride? Is this the, the is this the ride to the execution? Yeah, that's the end. That's the, oh, my boy. ride to NBC. <laughs> that's when I go on to my next show. <laughs> are you are you that. are you in anything right now? No, no, you, I'm done. I I um when the when that happened. I knew very quickly that there was no way I was going to work. That, well, you know, everybody was handing out vaccine cards and go do this. You can pay thousands of dollars. Oh, that's fake interesting. Card, a lot of them had all fake of cards. that. Beautiful, and um, my daughter, I, it got to the point where I started to get really nervous. I took a forbearance. I shouldn't have done it. They they screwed me over in the forbearance. There's a lot of politics in it, and it mm. was all it was all lies. It was all built on lies. Mm. Um, so when I had to go back and pay that money, there was just, I didn't have the, the right amount of money because I also found out that I was stuck with like three different insurance policies that were astronomically expensive. So there was no way to get through it. And my mom was now dying, the the nanny, the nanny who I call my mom, she was dying and I couldn't bring her into a hospital because they wanted, her doctor wanted to vaccinate her. He became the spokesperson for J and J. Oh my goodness. So, and he's Does he all have any regrets news. about that now? Is he concerned I never, about I it? I never uh, returned mm. a fucking call 
because he did not deal with her as she was dying and he could have come to that house and dealt with her because she couldn't go into a hospital. Mm. They would have separated her from me. And or you could I have sent a nurse at least. You can send I took care yeah. of her myself. I became Dr. Dre. Oh boy. I became Dr. Dre and we uh. took care of her until it was time and she died in my arms <laughs> and that's oh, the way I goodness. wanted it. Wow. But, um, but during that time, I, it was the man, at first it was the mandates, then they opened they opened up, but I, I lost I mean, my manager, my, not my manager, my agent dropped me and my daughter begged me not to use the card. Were, were you tempted. already I having, I mean, this agent, if you ended up with a hundred dollars in your bank account, what's up with that agent? You know, they didn't care. Nobody cared. You, they, there, there's this renegotiate idea that, that they get into they when you're in a hit show. They didn't yeah, represent no. you. Well, nobody represented me back when I was on a lot of these big shows. I've gone from... I just I don't even know who my agents are. Half were, you, the time. were you just not didn't know that you could do all that? I mean, I do what that I, I mean the jobs that were being and, yeah. offered. I were mean, before all in. the shit hit the fan, could you? I wasn't on anything at that time. I wasn't working. I am I one see. of the actors that tries not to work. I want to be with my kids. I, I want to take care of the old lady because she was always always needed me with the heart transplant, especially mm. towards the end, even in the beginning. But. Um, I've been taking care of her since I was 20. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't travel to work anywhere. I wouldn't leave my kids ever. I didn't want them raised by a nanny since I was raised by a nanny. Mm. And um, Raised by a nanny in that part of Queens. Yeah, because my mom, my mom was a classic Italian-American young girl, daughter of a mafia guy. Ah. And she wanted to be an actress. And he was like, only whores are actresses. <laughs> I mean, he was right because I ended up becoming the hooker of Hollywood. But um, <laughs> so... So she uh, became a playwright and she didn't know how to balance everything. Oh, she interesting. She wanted to really pursue that thing. And she, Is that when you moved to Manhattan with her? We moved into Manhattan because there was weird stuff happening in the school systems in Queens at that time. So they had to get me out of that school and put me into an all girl school in New York, mm. Manhattan. And I went to the school she went to, which was Mary Mount, which is like an all girl fancy school yeah. next to the Met. And then I went to Loyola High School. I never left Manhattan. I went to NYU after that. Uh. And then, uh, I mean, you're, I mean, I have to tell you because you're the addict expert. Uh. But then by the time I was 21, I was in rehab. Oh, goodness. And I got my life together. And then I started acting. Interesting. Yeah. So that's my life story. I was raised by the nanny. I didn't want my kids raised by the nanny. So I never took jobs. I took whatever job I needed to make sure I could get through three years. Mm. And that was it. And that worked fine for me. I never wanted to be all, I never was in the news. I never, no one knew anything about me. I was super quiet. I think and that's why you're- I am all over the fucking Right, place. that's why you're uncomfortable with all this. You, you really don't- No, I'm okay. I'm, I'm ready well, you're, to, you're, I am you're, ready to die on this mountain. Well, I was gonna with say- With you. Okay, I'll be there with you. We'll um, hold hands. I don't we'll hold hands anymore. and jump. Yeah, I think I, having I'm, kids too. I just can't, I can't leave things the way they are. For these children, when your daughter comes home and says to you, you know, I mean, the things that they were teaching them in the LAUSD during this entire time, it, I don't even want to bring half of these things up because they're all social issues. And the social issues are really, even though we have to dive into them, teach your kids what's right and what's wrong. I don't think the social issues are the issues. I think people are so fixated on all of the minutia right now, and they don't know what's really happening. I would agree. Behind the scenes. I, I would agree. It's, and, they, it's, and everyone's getting divided, which it, is- it, it sort of feels like we're all sort of useful idiots. I know, yeah, but, but so many of us really are aware of what's happening. But if you try to tell anybody about it, they it, think you're crazy. I, I think it's so hard to tell what's happening that to, to keep a certain amount of- um, what would it be? A lack of certainty? You know, certitude is the problem right now. I irrational certitude. We, we don't, there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going. There's a lot of uncertainty about where we're headed. There's a lot of uncertainty about why we got here. Be, be, be humble in the face of all that, but also push back you know, like we're talking about, we're the hill. But we're ask gonna, questions. At ask least questions. ask questions. Oh, That's speak, the big and thing. And speak your mind. Your your opinion may end up being correct, and you're it may afraid. help some other people. You're afraid? No, people are. Oh, I, I mean, I've been. I was petrified forever to say anything. Yeah. I kept my mouth shut until I put that one picture up on OnlyFans, and that was it. My life was fucking up for grabs, exposed. I had to give one statement to Fox News, and that was it. 
I mean, we were going to do a podcast on OnlyFans. That was the original intent, was to just do this podcast, raise money for Ultra Free, so that I could get out of Hollywood completely. And I put one picture up, and I was like, oh my God, we just paid Compass back. I was like, how long did that take? It was within a day. You, you said like in five minutes you made more than the last season of Sopranos, last couple seasons. They misquote me on all of those things. Of course. Things. It, 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 if, of you, if you wonder how fucked up the press yeah. is, have them write about you. You'll find out immediately yeah, how inaccurate they are. It's definitely so, out there. Yeah. Um, I took a, I, took, I mean, people are approaching me to do things that I would have said no to because I'm like, oh, I don't like that magazine anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't like this publication. Mm -hmm. But like Rolling Stone came and wanted to write a piece. And I thought we were just taking bets if they were going to destroy me because what are, they have no interest in me. They didn't even write an article on me when I was at the height of my world right. in Sopranos. We were on the cover, but there was never a piece on me as a human being, not yeah. as me as Adriana. Did you take that interview? I took the interview uh -oh. and I was sick for like a day. You should be. I was be. like, they, I don't know yeah. what they're going to do. They, they're never they're never up to good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Usually up to no good. But they were fine. Okay. They were fine. And I do think that on some level, the messaging of our of our clothing line, even though it's not really only about politics, but it was the impetus for it, was to bring people together and to wake people up and sort of to just to tell people to, you know, we want to make freedom cool again. Well, that's I think that's maybe why you had some traction with those guys, because that's what Rolling Stone magazine was about. Yes. It was about rock and roll. And when you look at the, this dog is really I going to town smell. now. <laughs> I can barely breathe. Oh, this is Rex. Right. <laughs> the <laughs> right here. I got nothing. Come on over, Susan. I'm have, have a load. <laughs> but, but, but when you look at the history of rock and roll, I mean, what was that? I know. That was a expression of freedom. Oh, 100%. And it was a pushback on the authorities, right? It really kind of came out of, you know, people, things being too oppressive and then the Vietnam War. There was a lot of just like, hey, stay out of my shit. And yeah. it, it, you know, it, it, the, do you remember that, oh, Caleb, I'm going to ask you for this. There's the end of a movie. It wasn't Easy Rider that Peter Fonda was in. And he is, he, it, it, it really, we used to make fun of it. But now in retrospect, it really looks like the rallying cry of that era where he goes, he's sitting, standing in front of a judge and apparently a whole bunch of kids got dragged in or something and the judge goes what is it exactly you want to do and he goes we want to be free yeah we want to ride we want to get high that's yes, what yes and so, let's go and, uh, without the getting high now and, too old. and and the the this the, the people that used to do that or that sort of quality is now involved in bringing authoritarianism i know but you which know which is so, so weird some so, of the old hippies like that though they are old hippies. The hippies like us. That's so funny. They're, but they're like they are conservative. They, now they I are. guess I've been fighting the right most of my career. I, I've been a moderate forever, but I've been fighting the right most of my career. The, the recent thing they were doing about abortion for the Supreme Court reminded me of all kinds of nightmares I had with them. And now this, I never imagined a day when the left would get up no. my ass to the point where they want to tell me how to live. It's insane. I, I've never been political. I've never. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even like actors who would talk about politics. I'm mean, the only person I would ever put up with with their politics. You know, some musicians, but you know, would be like Neil Young, who I. Adored for years. He was my favorite. I framed pictures of him all over my house. I have to sell them. And now I can't believe what he did with Joe Rogan. I could that <laughs> blew, weird. My blew my mind, mind it's away. So weird. And it wasn't just that. It was on. It was also right. It was during the convoy, the truckers' convoy, which is like the in, working in Canada, man in Canada and the Trudeau. Yeah. And he's a Canadian. Yeah. I'm like, you're a Canadian. Oh, I didn't know he's Canadian. You're not going to stand up for these people right now. You're going to condemn them. And it was just like I, I, when, when you when you talk about it sort of spontaneously like, that, like we are. I, I hope people sort of shake their head and go, "Oh God, what are we doing? What what is?" You know, what, I don't what know. It, My friends it, don't understand. Like they're they're so mad that I would support. They think that just because I support Kennedy that I support Trump. And I'll be honest with you, like I'm not. I think that either uh, it's. I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't care. I feel like we need as many years of these guys to come back in there and get in there, whether or not they have different style, completely different style. But I think the the actual goal, a lot the the main goal, the big goal with the globalism and all that stuff is the same. I feel like if we don't stack the players to get in there and unravel what's been done for the last fifty years of corruption, we're fucked. 
Well, I, I like uh, RFK also. Susan really is an enthusiast, and we met you at a comedy show there. Uh, and I will support him. I'm not. I don't know that I'm going to vote for him, but I love that he's there. It, it yeah. reminds me of the the system. <laughs> it's like well, I, somebody's speaking some interesting ideas and yeah. stirring it up and get, getting. A I wrote him in together. on my ballot under the "We the People" uh, category. Category, I yeah. But it. you Party. had to go. You had to add him on. He hasn't. He was in California. I didn't know that. I was um, really having a hard time at, when I went to vote. It was rough, and they were all the people there. They all knew who I was. Uh -oh. They're all waiting to see who I'm voting for Marie. because I had to change my. I voted for Biden. Because I was, I had Trump derangement syndrome <laughs> for a minute there when, um, when it was over the border because, oh. because I have so, I have friends that are illegal uh. and I had to spend a lot of money to try and move them around. Like I wanted to bring some people to New York with mm. me and I hired a tour bus with a, with a policeman, with a, with a, it uh. was a ex cop armed. I was like, I'm not fucking around. I'm not going to let my friends get taken away. We were really paranoid, <laughs> you know? And, um, Man, did I have that wrong? How are, they, how are they? All those, all those people want to vote for Trump, and they can't because they're not documented. And they're like, "Should we cross the border eight times to get documented so we can vote?" Oh, here's the. <laughs> so hold on, uh, play that back to the beginning. Uh, you you, you, you got it there. We machines without being hassled by the man. Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> and we want to get loaded. Yeah. And we want to have a good time. <laughs> The judge. And that's what we're going to do. Well, when, baby? Let's go. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a party. Yeah! We're going to have a party. <laughs> and he's standing up to the man. That's Amazing. <laughs> Nobody oh. will stand up to the man now. Nobody. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's so quiet. Nobody even wants to be seen at Kennedy's um, events. But that was what the Rolling Stone magazine was founded in, in that kind of yes. attitude. And so- They I'm didn't destroy me. I'm glad to see they support you mm -hmm. because your your iconography and your, and, your, and your clothing and everything is all about that, what Peter Fonda was talking about there. But they don't care about that and they haven't cared about that. They did, they did try to take me down. I don't read Who's any they? of it. Rolling Stone. I, I didn't read it. I don't read anything I do. I won't watch it. In the this. article they tried to take you down? They, uh, what did they do? They posted my tweets and I don't oh. really use Twitter, but mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've read- Tweeted maybe a couple of tweets that people have sent me. Mm -hmm. Maybe one was about on Sherry Tempany or something or Tom Renz, who I think you actually had on your show. A couple times. But um, yeah, they, they were, and they they listed all the ways in which those those people were quacks and charlatans. Yeah. And uh, or, or conspiracy theorists, right? Isn't that, yeah. That's where you have to, if you, if you go against authoritarianism, you're a conspiracy theorist. It, it, people, please wake up, everybody! Should be, it, you should be laughing at this. We got to mock it. Let's, let's be fair. We got to mock it. All right. So, Caleb, here's what I want to do. Um, I want to take a break. Uh, Drea De Mateo is here. You can follow her on X. You see it up there on the screen. D R E A D E M A T T E O. Anywhere else you want? You want and we will, of course, want you to go to Ultra Free hashtag Ultra Free. That's where the clothing line is. Is UltraFree.com? Only fans. Ultra <laughs> yeah, go, oh, Susan. You talk about the my only only fans. Fans. Where is the OnlyFans? Yeah, that's just Drea De Mateo. Okay. It's <laughs> the hooker of Hollywood. Would. Did you go? Me. Did you look at it? Sign up, Drew. You signed up. All right, sign up for it, <laughs> oh and God. we'll talk about that when we get back. But I, Kayla, when we roll in from the commercials, I would love it if you replayed that Peter Fonda piece from the beginning because it's so interesting. Yeah, we might get well, like a, when the yeah, drug, the judge goes, "What to. is it you want to do?" Yeah, oh, you're not allowed yeah, to. That's too the long. longest I could play. Why? Because yeah. the party. Like, could well, you could you roll it back the other way? Uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You get you get the you I'll get the try. vibe. Was it the it trip? Just go look it up on yeah, YouTube, yeah. everybody. What's that? Was it the trip? Is that what it's called? Caleb, is that the trip? Is that the name of the film? Oh darn! It was an Easy Rider. It was some other film that no one knew about, and we used to use it on K Rock back in the day as a drop. Yes, back in the day. Now you had a K Rock in New York. We had a K Rock out here yes. too. Yes, and um, and the one here sort of invented all the. The uh, new age stuff, new, oh. new, new music, and um, and he, we would always drop the, the Wild you know, Angels. The Wild oh, Angels. I don't know that movie. It's at not. All. It's an obscure thing, but that one. Nineteen sixty-six. We're gonna do. We're gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna do. What we want to do. We want to get we high. Free. <laughs> we want to be free. Yeah, we want to be free. Let's make freedom what? psychedelic again, man. <laughs> you can see it on on YouTube. So. The, the that very clip. The Peter. I Fonda mean, clip? it's all over the place. So. The Peter Fonda clip. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take a little break. 
uh, do pay attention. We These are all people we carefully select and stand behind, as we do with uh, Drea and her, and her clothing as well. Support that as well. Be right back. You could spend thousands of dollars and dozens of hours trying to look a few years younger, or you can skip all that and the hassle and go with what works, GenuCell Skin Care. GenuCell is the secret to better skin. Their products are made in the USA using a proprietary technology that combines a naturally effective base with non-GMO ingredients. In fact, you might have witnessed the astonishing effects of GenuCell during a recent unplanned moment of our show. When just a little GenuCell XV restored my skin within minutes right before your eyes. That is how fast these products work. I know I'm a snob about the products I use on my face. Everybody knows it. Every time I go to the dermatologist's office, they're just rows and rows of different creams. Retinols, vitamin C cream, under eye cream, night creams. Scrubs. And then when I get to the counter, they're overpriced. All kinds of products that you can all find at GenuCell.com. Susan and I love GenuCell so much, we've created our own bundle so you can try our favorite anti-wrinkle creams, correcting serums, under eye treatments. Say goodbye to those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, skin redness, even those dark under eye bags. Women and men of all skin types, GenuCell has got you covered. Order right now at GenuCell.com slash Drew to save 50%, actually over 50%, and you'll get a free luxury spa box plus free shipping. That is genucel.com slash Drew, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash D-R-E-W. Susan has talked about how she has been struggling with thinning hair and using Provia. I'm so happy because Provia is helping me grow longer, stronger, and shinier hair, especially up on top. Thank you, Provia. A reminder that Provia uses a safe natural ingredient called Procapo. It effectively targets the three main causes of premature hair thinning and hair loss. Scalp circulation the delivery of nutrients, and healthy hair follicle anchoring to the scalp. Provia guarantees more hair on your head than in the shower or on your comb. And right now, new customers save over 50% plus free shipping on Provia's introductory package at proviahair.com slash Drew. Every package includes a full 60-day supply of Provia serum for daily use, plus the Provia Super Concentrate for faster, more noticeable results. And every order includes your choice of a free gift. Provia works, guaranteed, or 100% of your money back. Don't wait. Order now to save an extra 10% and get free shipping at proviahair.com slash Drew. Not Dr. Drew, just Drew. That is P-R-O-V-I-A-H-A-I-R.com slash Drew. You asked for it, and the wellness company has delivered. The medical emergency kit, replete with ivermectin, prescription antibiotics, and more, continues to fly off the shelves. We keep one here at home. And there are three new kits you need to know about, and more are coming. The Contagion Emergency Kit was inspired by the high demand for the medical kits. In that Contagion kit, you'll find ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, antibiotics, budesonide, and a nebulizer. And a must for your next trip is the Travel Emergency Kit, something I made sure exactly what I give my patients is in this kit and some more. The kit includes remedies for jet lag, a variety of infections, even GI ailments, Imagine your flight getting grounded anywhere, say even in the U.S., and you start getting sick. You do not want to be at the mercy of the U.S. healthcare system or any healthcare system. At home, we keep the ultimate first aid kit on hand. It has over 20 essential supplies and medications for situations when time is of the essence. Order one for your car and your go bag. Because these kits contain prescriptions, your purchase includes a telemedicine consultation as well as an instruction manual. Go to doctor.com slash TWC for 10% off. That is drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off all your orders. I'm very excited about these kids. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC. I have no edit button. Drea DiMatteo is in here. She has no edit button, but you haven't needed to use it. So I, I was, I'm kind of disappointed, actually. You told us you're going to be cussing and sweating your balls off in here. And, and not, nothing. Nothing comes out of her mouth. It's oh like, where God. did you grow up, actually? I, I think I'm, that girl's school had too much of an influence on you. I'm really <laughs> behaving myself right now. The minute the cameras are off and we're in commercial break, I'm cursing my brains out and sweating my balls off. <laughs> there we go. You know, I was thinking about your OnlyFans, which I want to talk about next. We, you should call it Crazy Horse. Isn't that the name of the club? <laughs> you should Crazy Horse. Or, 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 or club, <laughs> club Crazy Horse or something. Oh, I, my I was, God. I was thinking um, about yeah, that. Yeah, I got, I got um, what I said to you when we when we got here is that a lot of people are making nasty comments. Not just are, are the fans saying weird shit, but... Mm. Um, a very high profile, not very, somewhat, some kid, he's a political, he's a con he considers himself a liberal. I'm not even going to say his name because he doesn't serve it. But he posted a tweet. He tweeted a picture of me saying, um, what was it? He said, 
becoming a, deciding to become a hooker instead of working, instead of getting a job, is a turn I didn't expect feminism to take. Mm. Mm. And it's like, okay, mm. this is, and this to me, and I like this, I, I like his whole thing. I like what he's built. I'm not here to bash on him at all. And even though he, and I took some shots at him too, because it was just good fun and sport at this point. I like that. But, but at the same time, like, I don't really have any animosity toward him. It was more like I felt like I had to defend women that really are hookers and who really do do these things and people who are on OnlyFans. And, you know, even when I was on Adam, her, your, your friend Adam's show, mm. I he was like, I wouldn't want my daughter to do that. And I was like, I of course not, but I'm 52. Who cares what I'm doing? Who cares this old lady <laughs> who's worked her whole life and now she can't figure out what to do and she can't even go work at a bookstore or a coffee shop because I don't have a vaccine card or a barcode. I was like, who, what, who, what's different? I wish I would have done it sooner. I wish I would have done it in the lockdown. I'd be a bazillionaire by now. And, and so what, what, well, I guess, what is it you're doing? I mean, what is it that's so upsetting to people? I, look, I know men, too. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, them wanting you to, to abuse them verbally, that kind of thing, berate I mean, them in some way, right? That's fun. <laughs> but, but, I'm, but I'm sure there's some of those guys, right? And feet, feet's going to be a big yeah, thing. Feet's, <laughs> feet, feet are huge. It's huge. Yeah. It, listen, I won't do anything that I wouldn't do on camera that everybody would just pay to see anyway. Right. So it doesn't really matter. And it's, you know, it's a fan page. It's a, it's a well, Adriana Laserva fan page. It's, it's odd to me that they would take aim at you for a modern fan page, essentially, I, for, for really exploring what the new media is. You're, you're pushing the boundaries of media, what it's going to be. Is, are you, are you, do you think they're, you're doing something that's undermining something? No, I did it. I did it to build, you know, to do a quick payback on something, and then to build Ultra Free, which yeah. actually speaks to what the the insulter is actually trying to promote himself. So clothing line. Um, no, he, this guy was a, is a political uh. someone who's talking about politics and and all of all of the corruption that's happening. Mm -hmm. And Ultra Free is kind of based in that. I mean, it was also inspired by my boyfriend Robbie and his. His, cre his creativity and my son who loves streetwear and all this sort of stuff. Oh, that's but, cool. But the, the point with the guy making the insult, the political commentator, Ben Shapiro did it to me too, I heard. I didn't hmm. see it. But um, these are people that I somewhat like aligned with during a time where I felt super alone. So it was so disheartening to see that and so sad. And I still wouldn't take cheap, cheap shots at them. But my point is... Even the people that are criticizing the left for being so antagonistic now and so irate and so unhinged are actually as mean as they are and not working any, not trying to unify people or trying to say, look, there's a bigger problem out there and it's not each other. Yeah. And it's not it's not your elected officials because what's going on is all unelected officials that are actually got everybody on a leash. So and, so what do you think is going on? What what is up with our government, our society? What do you have a theory? I I I I, I feel like I woke up in Wonderland. Me too. You know, and, and so things I never would have considered before in on many fronts, science <laughs> You know, many, many, many layers of things I would have gone like, T -t 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 come on, come on. Now I'm like, yeah. eh, I'm all ears. Pro prove to me it's not that first. I think that in the, I was really, um, my boyfriend at the time, the father of my kids, we were psycho over the Bush administration. You didn't like it? No. The, and this, we, again, not political. Bush but, too. Um, young Bush. Young Bush. And this, Baby and, Bush. And I remember... The thing that, that when people took issue with that war, the thing that drove them crazier than anything was when he was reelected. That's yeah. when people went. Whoa. Well, nine eleven. But but it, but his response to nine eleven was one thing. But, but then I think was, people had so much faith in him at that point. Well, people they were, were so, so scared, afraid. We we scared. didn't like Giuliani when we were in New York, yeah. and then all of a sudden he became the king. That's right. And now I you know now I have a different scope on everything. So but, so um, explain that to me. What what is it? How do you how do you understand it? Because I, I this is I one of the things <coughs> I, I don't get. even understand half of it. All right. But, so so I'm guessing you're tilting at the military industrial complex, and that people are sort of in the bag for I don't know what. That somehow the regulators and the corporations are kind of yeah. I mean, all that stuff is obviously all at play. But I, I think more, even trying to bring it even more down to not even the social issues, but 
all these big companies, and I know you talk about them, so it doesn't matter. I, mm. I, I can't believe you talk about all this stuff, and I can't believe that YouTube doesn't take you down, but fuck it, I'll oh, just they, go they, for they, it. They, they try, but they, they were so, but they've been so, Caleb, what's that? <laughs> she goes, I make said, her oh, shut they up. Do. Oh, they do. Shut up. Yeah, they <laughs> do, but, but what's bizarre, Caleb, what's bizarre is only in their domain of their sacred cows. So you, you vaccine would be a little touchy, and he'll have to put up a, a disclaimer on there, oh, but you cannot mention certain medication. Then mm. you'll get taken down, or at least it used to be that the one. The I word. Yeah, the I oh, word. Oh, yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> that one's my favorite. <laughs> oh, look, look, there it is. But he has maybe, to put that up. So, What if we say that remdesivir is the best thing ever? <laughs> no, don't ever say that. Uh, it's the worst thing ever. They, they actually don't take an opinion on that, which is, oh. <laughs> 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 <He's> putting, <laughs> There she goes. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. So Wait, that's the area you can't talk about, but you can't talk. i put that on my OnlyFans. Wait, did that just happen, like, in real time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He just did that. And so <laughs> Wait, your producer yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay. I don't know if he was Thanks, joking. <laughs> I don't know if he was joking or if that was for real, but I think he was just playing it safe, I suspect. Oh, my God. The only reason why I brought that up is because I, I, I looked at a crazy thing about what was happening in the Nashville hospitals. That mm. was it, and I just saw how much money they were getting for the ventilator and for that particular drug mm -hmm. to get people on, and it was <laughs> astounding. That And that was how I un started to understand what was happening I, early I, I'm on. I'm sighing because three years ago, I would have gone, no, 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 you understand, we're doing our best and these things are expensive and blah blah now i'm like i'm, I'm not sure I, yeah. I don't know anymore that's I'm, what I, happens when you don't let an actor go act anymore they stay home and they just read <laughs> all day with their kids my daughter was the one who was at the front at the front of it all why is it a, like a, why can't we smell why can't we smell why can't we taste this is a neurotoxin then mm -hmm. so that's not a virus like well you know, it just started to get crazy. But where were we before that? Sorry. Well, we I we think. do kind of know where what happens with the the smell and 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 hearing too. It actually hits the eighth cranial nerve a bit too. It 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 is um, a vasculopathy. The spike protein causes a destruction of the very smallest vessels, and out on your nasal on your nerve, your first cranial nerve, that's Presses. way out in the periphery, and so those vessels are tiny, and they break down, and the nerve breaks down. Then it has to re rebuild later, hopefully. Um, Never and, happened before. It's the first uh, time. It's, it's a well, and here's the really here's what gets me. So yes, first time for that particular process. Uh, people have known about coronaviruses for a long time. We've not particularly been worried about that spike protein until now, and then we go and we direct our vaccine to produce more of that protein that causes the pathology. Explain <sighs> now early on. Early on, I could defend that. I, I would go, look, we, it's an emergency. The vaccine is, we, we got, it's, it's much more produced when you get sick and it's much you know, out of control and we want to stop it. And yes, maybe there's some risk for the spike protein, but we have this thing running crazy. I could have defended that back then. Now, what the fuck are we doing? I know. I know. Now I don't understand it. it please explain it to me because we have vaccines that are whole virus and okay, let's do that. No, spike protein. Yeah. The, thing, the thing that we know causes the pathology. I, I, I it's also. I mean, you're the doctor. Well, but <laughs> you are but the that, doctor. The doctor. <laughs> but that's I want to know why it affects. I want to know why the vaccine um, causes so many kidney problems. That because I'm seeing that with my family, and I'm kidney. just like, what the fuck is that? Um, you know, renal, well, maybe renal clots, or I, it is again where you have. It's very much like diabetes, which destroys the smallest vessels. So it's kidney, eye. Yeah, the eyes are also a thing yeah, that's happening. Yeah, it's it's all where the tiny, tiny vessels are, and and the and the nutrients from the vessels are vitally important to those tissues. Uh, and so, yeah, these are areas that can get affected for sure. I mean, I feel like we're getting attacked all day long, anyhow. Well, here's by, what I would like stuff. to know. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, what I would like to know is is do they know something about this virus that made them extra scared? Please tell me. Was there some? Was Who? it the people that were so aggressively pushing vaccine and lockdowns and everything else? Did, in other words, if they could say to me, "Hey, man, you know we that we knew this was a bioweapon, and as such, we knew the kind of bioweapons they were working on would morph and mutate potentially into very dangerous things. That's how it's designed, or how it could potentially work." Just tell us that, and then I'm I'm going along with everything. But, but we if, well, we now know we I mean now, now I mean, but now we know it wasn't 
Right. It, it, it didn't have that potential. What about disease X? If that comes out, is that a Marburg or an Ebola? I don't, it, it could be all those things, right? <laughs> What's next? And, and here's the deal. Everyone needs to be aware about the World Health Organization Treaty and push back on that. That's Louisiana why, just that's just why push I back. Ultra free. That's the only thing I care about. Is the World Health? I thing. only care about that treaty. I oh, have been I have been on amazing. top of that treaty for so long. I'm oh. like, you want to fight about abortion right now? You're not even going to have the chance to decide anything. You're worried about all these social issues. I, I, the social issues for me now. Yeah. And I, look, I come from a long line of. Um, uh, my great grandmother was an abortionist. I, I've, I'm pro-choice to the nth degree. I don't care if you're pro-life. I still love you and I understand you. I these issues right now, let them go. Let the state handle it all. Everyone wants to condemn Trump for giving it to the state. Trump doesn't give a fuck about abortions. Yeah. Neither does Biden. Biden doesn't care about the gay community. Oh my God, they were just pawns for him. Mm. He doesn't care about anybody if he's even really in. Somewhere, if he's really still on this plane with us, who the hell knows? But I, I just think that the that that treaty, and I know it's May twenty twenty four. You have to opt out. We have to well, opt he out was of it. In. I mean, but I know it's very. Bad. I don't know. I I just can't imagine that they can have that control. Well, that's you know, a friend of mine told me that he said, "Look, they, when the time comes, they'll, we're just going to dismiss it. We're not going to let that happen." Just that a lot of countries but, are in. Or have big. not opted out. Well, just least. the fact that look, I am I am obsessed lately with this notion of centralized authority. I I cannot get my head around why that is so popular. That is that has been the source of untoward evil throughout, certainly since the French Revolution and forward. When you over centralize, bureaucratize, whether it's in the hands of a monarchy, a bureaucracy, or a dictator, you end up with really serious problems. I feel humans like are harmed. We are in this, and I know I, and I, most gone, of us don't want to believe it. They don't even understand what it means. I think I, I don't think I understand what it means really yet. In I terms don't of, either until you go broke, until you lose everything. Tell me about over that. that you over know, once oh, you, over you, defending your body. Yes, yeah. when you lose everything and you're like, I don't care. I'll die on this mountain. And then you really want to understand why you just made that decision. Then you, once you see all of the reasons and follow all that money and see all the corporations that are in charge of everything and the monopoly that we're living in and seeing how they're, they're pushing this communist agenda with the kids at school. Meanwhile, the people that are pushing that agenda have, have no regard for human life at all. They're, 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 they wrap everything up in this humanitarian package and convince everybody and convince the youth of America. This is why I, I get crazy because my daughter's 16, my son's 12. I'm like, they try to convince these kids that they're responsible for all of, uh, of the, all the evils of the world, that from the climate to race to sex. It's like these kids don't, they're, they're all depressed. Oh they boy, think that they? they're in trouble. I mean, you know, you probably understand the psychology it, it, of this uh, and how they've managed to hypnotize an entire generation. And I do think, you mentioned the French, I do think that not having strict parents, and if you like parenting in LA, when I would watch these parents parent these kids, I don't want to be judgmental, but <coughs> we don't ahead. say no, we don't say don't, we don't say can't, don't fuck say, that, don't. no, don't, you can't, go to your fucking room, yeah. I don't want to hear it. They have they have principles, they have some values. Mm -hmm. They know they can't just that walk was, all That was Brooklyn people. too, that wasn't just out here. Yeah. yeah. It was really going on big time. The, what, the, the new age stuff in this Brooklyn? This no, don't say no to this oh, child. Yeah. Don't now, but that's a recent thing. I see. That's our generation. What's the matter, Susan? Yeah, Remember it is. Pauline was babysitting and yeah. or doing something with a school for kids, yeah. and you weren't allowed to say no. That's right. Yeah. Fuck that. I mean, how do you? I had triplets. I had to say no. Not oh only that. God, and that's God intense. damn it! It is intense. That was, it was yeah. my daughter's first words. <laughs> how old are the the triplets? Thirty one. No. Oh, you guys have you have a, <laughs> you have it. a bunch of adults we now. We made it. We made so, it. Oh my God, triplets. Yeah. Triplets. I'm jealous. Yeah, you yeah, should be. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> It was crazy. <laughs> Turn my hair gray. You have gray hair it's, like that. Yeah. It's so much oh easier now. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, it, it's 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 uh, it it it's great, and it has net benefit as as you move along through life. So oh, I nice. can't wait to go to dinner with you guys and and ask all about the. We will tell you all, all the stories, my dear. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Well, you know, nobody's perfect. But let let's go swing back around the uh, 
so the uh, the OnlyFans again because because I want to kind of oh, I love it you plug he really the wants fans me to get today. one now He's... well I may want Susan to get one yeah. as part of, I, as part the, of the Rumble, reason I have a bunch of guys on Rumble said they'd actually pay for it if I did it well oh I, my I Susan think you and me collab let's go babe <laughs> I, I I think I'm going to talk to some of the people you're talking to uh, in terms of podcasting and maybe get them to set up an OnlyFans with the two <laughs> so, of you, you on know, that platform do you know who Tom Segura oh is my God. I do I do. Yeah. Um, the kids from The Sopranos did a show, I think, under there. Yes, they still are there. Right? So, They're okay. still doing yes, it. Yes. Yes. He thought it would be. We ran into them at the montage after we, they canceled us on their show by accident. It was weird. Canceled us. And he's like, "Yeah, Susan, you should get an OnlyFans." He goes, "You can call it Susan's B Hole." <laughs> oh my God, I would die. Well, we were I sitting said, next you know, to you. I think I'm going to sell workouts and supplements. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay. Cool. Thank you. A, there is a lot of it's really you know uh, it's interesting. I uh, oh they want me to have an OnlyFans, Susan. Be careful. Amazing. Um, <laughs> there's a there's a lot of um, you know our re- our chat rooms and stuff. Where people feel free to speak their, speak their minds and it gets a little cantankerous sometimes. And and if I say things that are not spot on what they like, they'll they'll come at me hard. Um, but today I'm seeing nothing but really significant um, positive stuff for you. Like they're very appreciative of not just what you've done, but what you're saying right now. Um, I think that's a testament to you, though. I have to say, I had to catch up with some of the stuff that you've been doing. I didn't know. I I know you from TV, you mm -hmm. know? But I had no idea you were riding this line and talking to all these people. We started like the French underground. The the French have been figuring loud in my life lately. But we started like the French underground. We were just like, okay, everybody, we're just here. We're going to give out the information. We're going to find out what we can. And we're going to share it. Good at it. And uh, do the best we can. And then it started becoming... Very much, I thought my responsibility to talk to people had been canceled. That became my sweet spot. Like That's you, what I want to do too at this point. Well, because you will learn something from every one of yeah. those people, much like I'm learning from you today, and I'm feeling you get inspired too. You feel like you feel like you've, you've got comrades in this in this uh, experience we're all sharing here. And it, it, let's go. So let's go back to the the OnlyFans. Um, was it Tim Pool that also took aim at you? <laughs> That's uh, the one. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I wasn't so going to say that so, fucker's but, but, name. So, so but there you go. But uh, the reason I bring it up yes. is uh, I've been on his show. I know him. I know them. Oh. Okay. And, and Sorry. I'm guessing there's a misunderstanding. Is what I'm guessing. Oh. All right. Uh, and so I think he thinks that this becomes the OnlyFan becomes specifically sex work. Address that. Yeah, I figured that. Address I figured that. that. I think that's where it goes no, off the rail. No, I figure, but but also he's young enough to know, and he's smart enough because he's so smart. He's very smart. You know guy. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but he's he's not he's he's well he's he's one of us. I yeah, would no, say. of yeah. course. That's but he's why not. I but said, he's not. Why specific, take a I wouldn't, shot at me? Like even Ben Shapiro. Why? Why take a shot at me? But, like but this my story's t- Tim a is hard to up. characterize his politics, right? Just, that's like yeah, he, he's just not authoritarian, right? Which is sort of what we're all ending up. But that comment and, was, and it creates. I know, and <laughs> it know. creates. It creates strange blood fellows, right? I mean, it's you and me and Naomi Wolf, all these people that are from right and left and they all end up here in these sort of, hey, leave me alone <laughs> category. Yes. And I think Tim is in that category. But so the why then leave me alone? Well, so what would you That's... tell him? What would you tell him about this? Well, I did. This? I told him everything I wanted to tell him and I put in it- In person? Well, first of all, it was, Kennedy was interviewing me on a fundraiser. Oh, RFK Jr. Yeah, yeah. Ken, RFK. Yeah. And he said, so what's it like when, being a woman in Hollywood these days? It was, I can tell you what it was like for Cheryl. I'm like, well, let me tell you what it's like to be a woman in Hollywood. And I pull up the- the, the tweet and they go, Tim Poole said, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, I'm sorry, what? So that's how it started. And then it got picked up by the news the next day. Mm-hmm. So, so that's it was, how I saw it. It was, I tweeted, not tweeted. I don't do Twitter. I don't really know that much about Twitter. I'm trying to get into it, but um, I Instagrammed some messages, but it was, it was just because it was outrageous and my kids were there and I was basically just showing my kids that you got to stand up for yourself. Like you can't just let people take you down like that. I didn't really give a shit. You should go in there. You should go in. They. I was supposed to go on the show. In in, in relation to all this? No, before. Before. I, I met him. There. Oh, oh, there it is. I even met him. Uh, but I don't really. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. 
Sorry, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I really don't give a shit about his comments. Like, I have no real emotional <laughs> attachment. Do not, here, for the record, get the American camera back. I do not plan to get into her crosshairs, just so we're clear. <laughs> I'm going to be careful. Because we <laughs> met him, and he was trying to promote his music to us and telling us about his music because he's, you know, he's Robbie's, a, he's Robbie's a, band is a They are band. a good group. They're a good guy. I would defend them. Oh, of course. And, and so we got to figure out what's gone wrong here. And so I, I want, I think you should go in there. I love That's it. I love funny. the, I, and I, by the way, I think he would see that as good fun, by the way. Your yeah, response. I don't, um, I, oh, he saw it. And then he yeah. rescinded his comment and, oh, and okay. called me a sex worker instead. Well, that's what I heard, the sex worker thing. Which and, is even, and that's, I so, mean, so, come so, on, but people buddy. Are, but that's like, what people are picking up on. That So so address that. What What is it that you're doing? How listen. do you see it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Did I just kick you? I no. probably did. I, and, and then you I probably really. I kicked you because you want me to make nice with uh, Tim Pool. No, no, I it's not even make nice. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to address this issue because it's coming up in lots of different ways. And if I'm going to put, if Susan's going to have an OnlyFans, I need to understand this okay. better. So. Well, first of all, for me, it was like, listen, I 100% understand the stance of not wanting society to do something that's just so easy. And, but ah, okay, if, so, if that's so let's, I'm going to write down the issue. So the issue is it's, it's too easy. Okay, well, so it's, it's not, easy. I, I know, but it's I'm going to. I'm going to. But the the but criticism. In his mind, it is. So it's easy. So it, it's it's low hanging fruit. Um, but it's not because he's not living in their shoes. He doesn't know what anybody's. It's there's no broad brush strokes. That's also the other thing. It's not a one size fits all. Uh, uh, only fans. Anything. Anything. Okay. Anything. So okay. So stop. Uh, okay, I would agree with that because what happens in the media is people are turned into cartoon characters. So stop turning people into cartoons. They're, people for are me, not with cartoons. The, the, the Tim Pool thing was more about just further dividing even the people that are even on your side. Okay. Um, and it's so, also just about hatred. Like it's why why is, waste your time is with misogyny. This? I don't care about that stuff. But, but just is. I, it? I, I mean, other girls might jump on that. Okay. I'm not a crazy feminist. Like mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna get up there and be that person because it's not who I am. I'm really not even that moved by his comment. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I said what I said and it, and I laughed the whole time. I'm sure. And it was funny and. I was a little fired up because I have a 16-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. And I'm just like, you know, my kids are reading this. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. Um, but does he know me? He doesn't know me. My whole thing with, with that is when are we going to ask questions? Yeah. Like, why are we just always jumping to conclusions? Well, that's what I want to get at. That's exactly okay. my point is that, is that I, I don't like the way I, – Media, and this is what worried me about your talking to uh, Rolling Stone, is that they'll just they'll turn you into anything they want. I, I was excited certain, about certain, it. Search their needs. You were afraid what they were going to turn I was excited. You? You I wanted to see. I wanted did. to see the aberration they made of me. It's like become a sport now. I'm so interested in all of it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Then we got to get you a podcast. We have we need, you need to be on a podcast because we're going to start cold calling people. Be, because then you can really address <laughs> all this and let it let it rip. You can let it rip. Well, I want people to start getting to a place of remembering that they probably have more in common yes. than not. You, you know okay, what so, I mean? So, That's my main thing. So, with, with ultra free, the whole thing. This is this is left wing. This is right wing. And it's you know just without the, we need both yin -yang, of these things. Yin yang, we you know, need the I, duality. We need balance again. I listened to uh, Ben. I got to know Ben Carson really well during that last administration, and and he gave a talk one day, and I, he, he said essentially that the the left wing and the right wing are essential figures that yeah. allow the what did he call it the 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 eagle or something of the United States to, to take flight. You, you can't fly with one. I wing think broken. so. I agree with that. Yeah, I do too. So we have to love each other and recognize the people that are trying to hold us all down and make us all fight. Well, and what's they weird want to is and conquer. what's weird is a lot of the movements of the aggression, this this bureaucratic centralization and aggressiveness of taking rights and privileges away from people. It's been done before. And it doesn't end well. It, it really is. It's why we have a Bill of Rights. It's what our Constitution was designed well, to balance against. You understand this better because you understand people's Rex, minds Rex more. Rex is busy for hi, me. Hi, my boy. Hi. So. Why is no one rebelling? Why well, do the here, French rebel? Why are the farmers out there putting their shit everywhere? Why are the they 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 protested everything? I mean, I know that they're the French. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we do anything? Why are the well, farmers in Holland protesting? I was in France during the some of the protests against the vaccine. 
They they were protesting mandates. Oh, I didn't even know they were protesting that, they but were, I know that they're going balls to the wall about the farming. It, and it was the youth doing the protesting. It was young people. It was not. And here, what they're jumped? Not pussies there because the French are. They tell their kids, no, yes, they're they're tyrants. The French. They are tyrants. I love them they're, when the, the way they parent. It, it, <laughs> My but, daughter went to a French school. That's uh, why I'm saying interesting. that. Interesting. Uh, and uh, we'll have to talk about that at dinner. It's very <laughs> interesting because I've got. A, I've been preoccupied. I talk about it too much on this show. <laughs> and and, uh, and they they it's jumped out at me so vividly. So we were there in France. When was that trip? It was like it was the summer of twenty one or twenty. The, the that time we went to twenty one. Twenty one. Oh, we were there during the whole right in the middle of everything. During the middle of May. every Saturday, yeah. they have a they have a there are huge there are huge trans, uh, demonstrations in the streets of Paris, oh, and yeah. it was all young and people. And I thought, wow! In, at the time here, young people were in you know, in schools asking for more lockdowns, more masking, yeah. more constraints, Insane. and I thought, oh, what has what have we done? What happened here? And there, I literally, as we were live, leaving, I uh, the woman behind the ticket counter, I plexiglass, because the French <laughs> the French government was way crazy, just well, like we were. Well, Same we, thing. They got they have somebody planted in there too. Yeah, but they were <laughs> pushing back. They, the people were pushing back, and this woman was behind the counter. I'll not forget this, and I and I go, you know, I noticed. I speak some French at that time. I was better now, and uh, and. I, I was saying, I noticed you know, the young people are pushing back and she got out from the counter and she goes, you need to understand, this is, a, this is important. I go, yeah, I know, I know it's important. She goes, no, it's a founding principle of our country. Viva Liberté. Yes. Liberté. Yes, the and I was like, this, The woman was this tall. And I thought, do you remember that, Susan? Do you remember her? I, I, I was it. like, viva la liberté. And I thought, oh yeah, fraternité, liberté. Um, what was the third, third one? fraternity, liberty, and uh, equality. That was their founding principle. Amazing. They fought a horrible revolution around it, and they were raised with these principles as as the, what, now they have a slightly different take, though. Their thing is, that's what gives the government its legitimacy. We don't talk about legitimacy here. No. They're very interested in what makes power legitimate. And they've overdone it, by the way. They've over they've over centralized there too, but they're talking about it at least. Well, at least in the streets they are. Here well, you ca you can't get a person to protest anything except for some crazy looting or social issues. No one cares about the reality. That's, that's it only our goes food. one way. It no seems one cares like, about yeah. the food. The, mm -hmm. There's so many big issues at hand. Just listen to RFK. He's he's addressing all oh, of I it. Know. He's I can't believe. By the way, mm -hmm. I cannot believe how he defines everything from start to finish. He and by is, the way, he changes his position a little bit too. Have you noticed? He he I, talks about the, as he learns about stuff. Yeah, he, all he'll, of us he'll start should. To, we should. But all not of us the, should. not the most people in politics. He really is like he's refining his argument and his uh, perception of what's going on all the time. But I feel like he's so not even in po the politics. He's, I mean, he is in the politics, but he's done so many humanitarian things I know, I know. and no one I know. knows. Oh, well, they do. And, apparently you know, in New York, he's well known, right? They clean up the Hudson River and they stuff. They don't care. I mean, do you know who Jessica Reed Krause is? She was, she was sitting with us at the, at the Kennedy, yes. at the yes, comedy thing. Yes, I do, thing. yes. She is this young journalist yes. who has now been coined to go, she follows Kennedy and she follows Trump and both teams are okay with this. Mm -hmm. um, and she covers everything And she seems fairly. like legit, right, she's legitimate. Like she yeah. really just asked. And funny, she's yeah, funny she's too. Funny. Um, How's yeah. What the heck was I going to say? What's that? Oh, I totally yeah, I think, I think, I think, Caleb? I think the person she's talking about is House in Habit on uh on Instagram, I lost I lost my track of. I, mean, uh, I forgot what we were saying. House and habit on Instagram is that yes, her? House yes. and habit on yes, Instagram. That's her. She's um. Oh, what the hell was? What were we talking about? Why was I even bringing? Uh, her up? Talking about uh. Well, just getting the, the refining our positions and oh, being honest. Oh, she posted um. She did a. She got all of these magazines where Trump was on the cover and Kennedy was on the cover. Both of them for being heroes in the eighties mm. and for being like the most amazing people. And then their magazine covers and the articles on them now. Like if you could read this article that she covered, that someone wrote about Kennedy and Vanity Fair. Mm. It is the most. Forget about Rolling Stone writing anything on. I could not believe that you can sit with this man for that many hours and walk away and write the article this man wrote mm. about Kennedy. It, it is mind-blowing. Mm. And you know that it is his job to do that. 
that's what's disgusting to me uh, yeah. that people feel that not just they're at their liberty to do so, which of course they are, but that it's their job to not to literally not tell the truth, to distort the truth as opposed to report the truth and to give it from a certain perspective that is hostile and aggressive and unregulated. And I just, I just don't get it. And I agree with that one was very interesting where it's interesting stuff about that evening and everything. Um, yeah. I think whenever I don't understand something now and I, and, and something seems weird to me, I just go and look up the shareholders <laughs> and then I, I immediately I know, some, know what's going listen, on. So I was, I, <laughs> I spoke to Megan McCain, her podcast went up recently that I was on. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the cozy relationship between the regulators and the pharma companies. And oh, how dare you? I expect more of you was sort of the, 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 the response on Twitter. And oh, I thought, oh, I thought I, so she I, said that. I was like, no. What? Uh, and so I went and looked at, and I looked, oh, there's all the former FDA officials that are now working for pharma. And some of them, I was surprised, some of them are exceptional professionals. I would defend them to the mat. So it's not all bad, Yeah. but I worry about it. We shouldn't have, I can't accept a pen from a drug company because the the FDA and other powers that be, my regulatory, regulatory agencies around medicine, believe that I would be biased if I take a pen. So you're telling me you're not going to be biased if you take a job from these people? And for, I, it's just, I don't know. Whatever. I, need to, I need to ask you questions now. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. I need to understand how, what, you've been doing this independently the whole time. Uh, but it's th on this, this this thing that we're doing, you're on right now. Yes, it's, it's Rumble on YouTube. YouTube and Facebook. Oh, so, and other so did you put a portion of it on, on YouTube, and then it goes to Rumble? Because I mean, are you no? We're live right now on everything. Oh, live. Twitter, everywhere. Twitch, Rumble, everywhere. Facebook, anywhere you and, can get a stream. We're, we're, so when you started talking about some all Russian this stuff, uh, oh yeah, what what? Because you're talking about the stuff. You're talking yeah. about WHO, yeah. we, WEF, we got, like we've all got, of the. We got. I was, you know, I was going to say, I was say, how isn't it interesting? The strange bedfellows that that this authoritarianism creates. It's it's direct. Rhea and Michelle Bachman are going after the World Health Organization. Can you imagine? I, I look you at your guests that? and I'm like, I don't belong there. These are like some. I I was following all of those people in the in the very heart of the pandemic, mm. and because I was I didn't know where to turn. I knew I couldn't turn to the news. We, we got anymore. canceled by a lot of people. We got we got. We uh, had strikes. We, we had, had strikes on YouTube. We had flags and, on Twitter up until just recently, and so, now we have this and we just huge we just keep viewership I, I just there. keep I, I we we just keep saying that. Look, I'm I'm not what you think. You know, th this is our actual opinions. They're doctors talking, trying to get to the truth. This is sharing ideas, trying to get to things, and um, because being a doctor definitely is a bigger threat to them, and especially being Dr. Drew Pinsky. Well, but I'm not of I, Hollywood fame. But I'm not also. one of these guys that I'm not. I don't really have the confidence. I'm, I'm humble in the face. Yeah, of Yeah, but all we this. were I mean, running from oh, the I law. Know. Like we had to stop talking about. You know, Certain cures things. for COVID. Yeah, we couldn't say yeah. anything bad about the vaccine. We we still are very circumspect about it. We had to have some people on with their books, and you know, nobody listened. But um, we just the tides turned, and we were able to start talking about it again. But we didn't get canceled on Twitter, which I was really happy about. We got Twitter flagged. is Twitter is a a godsend since. Since but Rumble know. kind I of still, took the power know, away you from about YouTube. It? I, no, I don't really deal with it. Yeah. I don't know it that well. So as soon as as soon as Rumble came along, freedom of speech, we I love pushed Rumble. our entire audience over there. Well, not the. But entire, I'll tell you what. Looking at, people, I'll tell you what, Susan. I'm looking. I'm looking at the restream today. There's not. There is one Twitch um, entry, two Twitch entries, and all the rest. One X. And all the rest is YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. So we're being suppressed in places. Yeah, you can no, just no. see it on Facebook. The Facebook is clearly still bad. Rumble, of course. Yeah, people um, from Rumble to come in, of course. No, I'm but Twitter, Twitter, we have Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. There are people on Twitter Rumble. watching, but they're just not no, chatting. Rumble, as much. Rumble. Let, let me be clear. We have a whole different chat from we have Rumble rants and I love Rumble. Don't be surprised. Right now, we have as many people on Twitter watching as we do on Rumble. Mm -hmm. They're just not so chatting. Twitter. How do you watch on they Twitter? They didn't know we could it's see Twitter. Them, huh? I don't know what I don't know anything about the Twitter talks. Is that what it is? So we have a live video on Twitter. If you look at it, our Dr. Drew. So you can have long streams. So people can like you know they can text their thoughts underneath, oh. and we can see it. We didn't. We weren't able to see it for a while on Twitter, but then all of a sudden one day we just had like a thousand people watching. <laughs> we, and it we was got, weird. Uh, Caleb got he got into it with them. No, it was there. when Dave Rubin came on. Oh, and it was weird because all of a sudden there were like I said there's a thousand people on there. Like that's the average per uh, 
platform, except for Twitch. Twitch is only like 18 people. They all love each other over there. They're like <laughs> Hi, buddies. Twitch. But, but do people so, try to come after you when you yeah. started having a change of opinion on everything? We had to be careful. We were like, I, I was watching everything afraid? really. We got yelled at and called clown and quack and everything on, on uh, Twitter for a long time. And <laughs> I was batting trolls left and right. I really, I, I was all, I'm, again, I'm so moderate. It's hard to and then this one guy made characterize a video. my opinion, right? This you one guy are. made this yeah. video. But and you're took, not your guests. No, my guests are, my guests are, are over their skis sometimes. Some of them I, I just don't describe. I don't agree with anything they said, some of them. And you'll notice they don't tend to come back. But I, I'll defend their right to say it. And if they want to say it here, fine. I mean, I said to Robbie, watching you do these, sh these shows, because I was mm -hmm. watching one this morning, I was like, I cannot believe how awesome you are. Oh, you're well, like, like really so like, I, I mean, I'm, I don't even know how to find the words, but just you don't. You don't give an opinion on a lot of the stuff, but I can tell how you feel about certain things because I'm an actor and I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm like, wow, he handles this impeccably, which is why he's never, he's just asking questions. I'm just You're asking just questions. Asking trying, questions. We're it's just trying to, we, human beings can never get to the truth. That's a fact, but we can approximate it. And our job is to try to approximate that. Yeah, truth. your humility and the way you go about it, you're mm -hmm. different from a lot of the other, because you, you know, right now you are you are a journalist now. No, uh, just, you are no, a journalist now. No, I, I'm literally not, but I understand what you're saying. You know, and, and, and I don't, don't have I, it I'm a host. Anymore. I'm a host, to be right. fair. No, and I, know, and, and I, know. I, I want you, I want, I want the citizens to be the journalists. I want them yes. to figure out what's going on. Well, that's, that's what you are, yeah. Ben. You are one of those citizens. Okay, okay I can you represent have all those. of these people coming on that are giving tidbits of truth and I yeah. just hope some people want to listen. They trust they, you. They people do. Trust they you. do. I mean, I'm I'm looking right now. Tim Dillon, they say, goes under that category. Uh, they want you to go on with on uh, Jesse's show over at your mom's house. I guess. Uh, isn't it Jesse? Jesse? Who's, isn't that is that who's at your mom's house? The kids. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to do their yeah. show when yeah. I go to Austin. Oh, good. That'll be really fun. Yeah. They're great. They're they're wonderful. they're the best. My yeah. babies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> babies. They're, they're really doing a good job over there. Yeah, I miss the guys at YMH. They were here, right? And then they moved. With yeah. Them. Yes, they were there. They were here, and then they moved over yeah. there. Yeah. Everybody's and, um, moving out. Yeah. They, they we're going to stay. We're going to change this place, guys. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's. I at one point I thought it's California is worth fighting for. It is, but I, I think it is I, worth I fighting for. It's, it's worth so. Fighting. I mean, you got to pay for that sunshine. So so I, before <laughs> we wrap this up, and Susan, how are we on dinner? What time are we supposed to be? No. There, we okay? We're fine, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I want you, I don't feel like we've fully addressed the Tim Pool thing. Because, you know, <laughs> oh cause you're, because no, I, it's not <laughs> Robbie's Tim, laughing. It's in not the Tim back. Pool I'm worried about. It, it's, I don't care about t Tim. I, I know Tim, so I know there's something. Uh, Do you know him really well? Are not, you guys well buddies? Enough, not buddies, no, but I've been on the show and stuff, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of friendly with some of the staff and stuff there. And and I just I just know that he'd come around. I'm friendly with the staff too. Some of them. And do they they support you? They. Um, yeah, they don't. They don't care. It's, they don't care. Right. It's so good at this point. Like I have, I I hold no grudge against the guy. You know, like I said, I think that we have more. And I said that in my in my Instagram post, we have more in common than we don't. I, I, yeah, and, but, and, but and he he still appreciates, a douchebag he for making that he, comment. I mean, calling what are you him doing? a C, calling him a C. He'd appreciate the. the I said worse things yeah. than that. <laughs> I said that was Twitter. I don't know how to use Twitter, so it was just a couple of words. But I think he'd appreciate a good a job. I think he'd appreciate a good job. But but let let's just say. Um, I worry about the people that pick up what he said and then go, yeah, you're a sex worker. Oh, yeah, he you're, took a poll. Uh, yeah. he, I'm sorry. I know you like him, but he did. He actually took a poll. Like he really, he spent the day doing some shit. So he took a poll asking if, um, I don't think that if it was if I was a hooker, but he was, but he used my image and said, you know, he, this he took is something the off your of fan. Hooker. He took your, something off the fan page. Off no, the he quote. He took. He retweeted something from Barstool Sports because ah. I did a show for them yeah. for one of their podcasters who was like a big Sopranos freak. So I, I they, saw that interview. It looked great. Yeah, it was cute. It was yeah. you know it, he, he was he's he a was huge Soprano he fan was, and he, huge OnlyFans fan. So I wanted to like kind of surprise him and do this. It was goofy. It wasn't yeah. the normal stuff I talk about really, but it was fun. And uh, oh, I thought it was Glenn, Glenny Balls. <laughs> That's his name. He's a kid. He's a 27 year old kid. But um, that he Barstool Sports posted something about me making the same amount of money in an episode of 
Sopranos as I did in a yeah. week of all, I, I, I saw know, that. like one of those things. Yeah. So he reposted that picture yeah. of a picture of me when I'm like 27 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm 52 now. And like, is that you 27 there? They yeah, quickly I'm a baby. I'm like yeah. at the screen. I'm at yeah. the SAG awards or something. Yeah. But, um, you know, cause you even say that like, I, I'm opting to not work instead to be a hooker. Big, and you, being you know a feminist, what? I mean, yeah, come on, Susan, buddy, help me with it. You know what I'm getting at? I, I feel I'm a like mom. This, How do you what, what not would you say call to it work? This? It seems so unfair to me the way way she's being treated. When, I don't feel. I feel I like as a man, like I can't quite get no, at it. No, I don't care. Okay. You know, I don't yeah. care because I, I have. I have no opinion. I've I've never been on OnlyFans mainly because I didn't want you to think I was on OnlyFans <laughs> <laughs> looking Susan. for love or something like. <laughs> I've never had like a dating app Susan on my phone. Susan likes the ladies or... now. <laughs> She's on only. Oh, I love looking at the ladies on on uh, Instagram. They're pretty hot. But um, it's like I just never have gone on because Drew's always like, "Well, why are you on there? What are you doing?" <laughs> you know, it gets all we get well, weird. It's, it's like it, there's so many it's people. Most but of I these girls are cooking on there. I yeah. That's I mean, right. That's that's but, my point. These like, are this is not. It's what, like a cameo. Not, it's kind of like having it's cameo. I, what I basically do on there, by the way, are tons of cameos. Okay, that's what I want to hear. I do tons of cameos, yeah. but. But my point with with him is again, you you know you have access to me. Before you tweet, ask a question. I'll talk to you at any given moment if you want. Just ask, like, why did you do this before I make this big statement? He made them do a poll, and eighty five percent at that time, because I said to my publicist, I was like, so where's the poll at? And she she goes, eighty five percent say you a hoe. And I was like, it's something like that. It was so funny. And my kids are sitting next to me. We're uh. all sitting there. We're all laughing. And I'm writing the, the thing to him. And my son's like, yeah, <laughs> douchebag. Because I said, my, my kids have a discount code for you at Ultra Free. And that's douchebag. <laughs> It was oh. all in good fun. And then he wrote a kicker at the end because he was so mad in the end because there was a poll. And then he, tw he not tweeted, Instagrammed something. And I, re I reposted all of them because every all my friends were up in arms saying, but not a lot of people. And it was just funny. At the, and I even wrote on there. I said, this is all in good, this is cyber sport now. I don't really care. I was like, I hope you can get back to saving America tomorrow. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't care. Like, what, don't, you know what? It's like, what's his name? In the, at the Oscars, get your name out of my mouth. Yeah, you don't need to talk about me. I, I would love to see uh, the restream and the Rumble Ranchers give Drea a little love here as we wrap things up, so she can leave with the support of this community. Um, <laughs> nothing but love on you. Yeah, here that's right what now. I've been. But I, that's why I asked for because I, I see nothing but that. So I bet they can really. And there's nothing wrong with being a hoe. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's a job too. I mean, that's not easy work, Tim. <laughs> Imagine some poor girl has to, she works hard for the money. You better treat her right. Uh, but, but more importantly, let's not attack each other all the time. Yes, we all belong together. You know together. what I mean? Let, like, there are bigger the, problems. Tim knows what those problems are. Put put the, you know? um, I, I know that. Put the um, ultra free stuff up for us, Caleb, so we can remind people about okay. that before we go. And uh, be clear, yeah, there it is, uh, that we, we all believe that the founding principles, you know, this is the only country founded on ideas, only country. And let's, let's all get together around those ideas again and to share the common, common, commonness that we all have, no matter where we came from. It's, we're all, you know, my parents, my father's family is running away from the Holodomor in the Ukraine, right? Your, the Italians came over here and, and did their thing. By the way, we I hosted the Mob Wives reunion one one year, and oh got to know God. all those ladies. Oh <laughs> was I got a God. real I got a really good sense of what Staten Island's all about. Oh, I <laughs> so, bet, I bet. It was really fun. Drita's my favorite. Drita was no bullshit, <laughs> but she's Albanian. Girl. She's I, Al I know. They're and running the reruns now. She's been so. reaching out to me. I can't wait to hang out with her. But she's fun. She's smart, and please do tell yeah. her uh, hi because she <laughs> she was. Uh, I remember in the dressing room, she's going, "Oh yeah, you don't do not f around with the Albanians." Yeah. To, oh, I know, I know. I have an Albanian friend. Don't, you don't fuck around yeah. with her, man. Mm -mm. So, um, but I, I, we started this talking about how you're you worry about speaking your mind and you're uncomfortable, and I, I want to encourage you not to be. You should Thank just you. bring it. Uh, this was fun, right? You felt good about it. You should feel this way every time you get in front of the public. Also. Another thing that I didn't realize when we met the the last time, um, your voice is really good on sound. 
I, oh. It caught my ear when I was listening to something. I kind of know what people catch catches the ear, and I went, "Oh, that you!" I was on that kids show. In fact, I was listening Scott on the uh, oh, the. The Glenny Balls? <laughs> the, Glenny Balls. The Sweaty Balls guy, yeah. And Caleb just said you need to do a podcast. You, do you hear it too, Caleb? You hear what I'm talking about? What, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a certain really thing. funny He's about really that. Nice mics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's something about your voice. It just it just captures Yeah, people. but some people's voices what? like mine don't sound so great on Oh, the mic. no, Susan, you sound good. You're going to be even better on OnlyFans with me. <laughs> but hold on, I want to tell you something really funny Susan's about my voice. Holes. Yeah. Susan's B-hole is my favorite. <laughs> um... I was let go by my manager when I was in my 20s, uh, when I got out of rehab and I, uh, got, I got my life together and mm. I started, I wanted to go back out into the world. Mm. She let go of me. Um, she said my voice was an atrocity. And back then my voice was a lot deeper. I was a heavy smoker. Um, and she's like, you can't, you're never going to be able to work in this industry. I go, do you mean my accent? Because I have a New York accent. I can yeah. get rid of that. Yeah. She's like, no, you need to take voice lessons. I said, okay. So Did you? I'll sign up for some voice classes. She goes, not regular voice classes. You need opera classes because your voice is really compromised. And I was like, opera classes, this is fucking bizarre. I said, so you're dropping me. She goes, yes, until you fix this. And I go, okay. And two weeks later, I landed the Sopranos. Did you, did you get some vocal training? No. Also? No, I mean, never the did funny it. thing is, is that she bitch. told me opera, and well, you know I what's landed weird? the Sopranos. Well, you know what's weird? I, I, uh, <laughs> That's my fucking story, I, man. I trained in opera for many, many years. And, I've and, heard that about you. And, and I, I, you have a quality where it sounds like you've no, had that. Sing. Yeah, can't but you have a, your vocal placement and stuff as a quality where I thought, I wonder if she had some training with it. I just never so, stopped talking. Yeah. But, <laughs> but no, I, that's right. You, I want to hear you sing. No, not anymore. The, the, the oh, aging so process Leo. has had its way. <laughs> Had its way with me. All right, we got to wrap this thing up. We could talk all day. It's uh, really fun to, and thank you for coming in here and being our our uh, premiere. Our our what do you call it when it's a, in not, studio? Yeah, our, our, what do you call it when this, somebody's the first like the first voyage, whatever that word would be. I broke uh, this place yeah, in. Yeah, I broke She's it not, in. Not though. Debut. With the sweaty balls. I mean, not our new lighting. <laughs> this, with, with, the new lighting with the new lighting. With the new lighting and the new cameras. The new lights. Yeah, with See, the new everything. Drew on. has Drew has a problem with the lights flashing in his glasses, mm. and mm. it doesn't work. It doesn't happen with these these lights. And I think this is probably the best you guys have ever looked. Yeah, it's really, really, it's, it's really well done here. We appreciate it very much. The people it, that helped us do this. Great. And Susan, great job with all this. Caleb, yeah, thank you as always. Uh, anybody have any last questions for Drea before I wrap things up here? I just want to say thanks for having me and thanks for doing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Listen, like always, what you've it's, always been doing. Oh. I want one of your emergency kits. Yeah, by the way. The, these I, I, we need to give. I, I, I'm holding it up. This, this is the travel kit. This is the one I kind of design. Is what I give my patients. I need a travel when I, kit. Do you want the travel kit? I want the travel kit. Can we just give her a travel kit? I don't know. I, I can is prescribe the same stuff. Is it illegal? Oh no, because oh, I, think I can. A legal I can. Problem. I can actually do a formal assessment on her. And I can do that well, in the state can, of California. So or, I can do it here. Or we can, can do, it do it. Oh, what's in it? We can oh, some yeah, medications. Show, it's show them what's in there. You have the anti-nausea, I know. Anti-nausea, which so it's like Zofran? But the, the thing what that is happens, it? What do you have? I have Zofran. But the thing that happens to people when they travel is they get infectious diarrheas. And so the stuff for that. Oh, they ugh. also get skin infections. They get upper respiratory infections. And so I... I Put all this together. So, oh, it's the antibiotics. And, and, and even, this is even, anti even steroid creams and antibiotic creams. You don't have, you don't have the big eye in there, do you? Uh, oh, she said the full thing. I said the big eye. It, it, is, okay. in the, it is in the travel kit. Put up the sign, Caleb. I think that's true. But <laughs> get a again, little hydroxy. You can get, what you, else you got? Yeah. <laughs> you, we have they do. You can get it with that. You do. That's the emergency. There's hydroxy. a COVID emergency <laughs> kit, too. Well, no, there's there's H, yeah. the H there's word or the I word. Things, my um my doctor I don't have a regular doctor I have you know a naturopath mm. doc and he um actually urged me to buy a bunch of inhalers and and I, I and I was about to buy them and I, and he sent me a message out of nowhere oh buy the inhalers too and I was like wow and lately I've been noticing out of nowhere. I will have a sudden, um, my lungs start to close up, wheezing, asthma attack. That has never happened to me. It's brand new. Did you ever get COVID? I don't think we put um, it in Yep, but I know what it's from. Oh. But that's a whole other we show. We have first aid. Smoking? <laughs> nope. There, there's there's nope. inhaler, I think, in their emergency kit. I think we put that in there. OnlyFans? <laughs> yeah, it's from OnlyFans. No, it's from uh, it's from aluminum and barium and uh, all those sorts of things that they There's like a lot going on. Is it, the, yeah. the poly crisis that we're in. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. All right, Drea, thank you. It's a privilege. Thank you for bringing her. No, and, and thanks for coming her in with the traffic yeah. in L.A. It's a pain in the yeah, yeah, butthole. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Thanks to Susan's b-hole. It's a pain in Susan's b-hole. <laughs> <laughs> Susan's b 
pee hole. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> so where's my camera? I'm out here now? Yes. Okay. So one of the things, yeah, we I don't know if we have tally lights. In there. there was what's coming up. Robert Bowers, Steve Van Fleet, Ed Dowd, Kelly Victory is going to come in here and talk to Ed. Vivek Ramaswamy coming in. Ivor Cummings, Jack Prasavik, Matthias Desmond, who I've been... Do you know who Matthias Desmond is? I love Matthias Desmond. Yeah, I've been wanting the, to talk to him forever. That's I, awesome. He, uh, he is the... He's been thinking about mass hysteria, what he calls mass formation, Psychosis. long before we got into our mass formation uh, around yeah. COVID. And he was thinking about it as it pertains to Germany and Russia and France and all those countries that go through these horrible yeah. spasms politically. And what what are we doing, people? The, 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 I know. Just pay attention his book to what's is happening. great. Yeah, his book is great. Uh, and uh, Dre is great too. Uh, go, go get the get the clothing, follow her on Twitter, or I guess Instagram, really, is it? Both. Is it? I mean, I want to build up my Twitter, so All come right. on over and hang out with me there. I'm, yeah. I'm going to start, tw I, you know, I'll start tweeting and retweeting all the things that are important to me, I guess. Uh, and our ultra-free, we have an ultra-free Twitter. That one, we're, we want to build that up, and that's where all the clothing lives. And our stuff is fun, because we do all these weird videos of aliens and messages and messaging. That'd be good cool. on TikTok. Yeah, mm, I don't have that. Or, I know, me neither. I don't do that. I'm anti-China, so I don't have it either. She's very paranoid about TikTok. Yeah. So. I yeah. have it, but I don't do anything. I don't do it. It censored us there. <laughs> oh, I, I know everything yeah, about it. You know I know everything about it. We had a Chinese viralist <laughs> on there, and they they censored us. And I said, okay, fuck you. I'm not coming back. TikTok's great and over there. It teaches them really amazing things. And in here China. it's just in eroding the, the kids. That's what I heard. Here. I don't look at it. My Drew, kids don't have Drew it. Drew looks at it more than I do. I, I, I'm fascinated by it. I, I use educationally, I find it good. I learn a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like Instagram. Yeah. That's more Instagram, my demo. Instagram, that's very similar. It's very similar. Yeah. All right, uh, we're, we're, people, we're, we're, people should yeah, still Caleb. follow <laughs> Drew talking. on TikTok because I've taken over his TikTok recently and we're putting good messages oh. over there now. So oh. you can yes. still follow He's Drew. Okay, never up. mind. No, yeah, I think you're doesn't need to mess with it anymore, though. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, just, it's just Dr. I Drew, right? I messed it up. And then, you know, I'm right. at First Lady of Love on Twitter right. and TikTok and Facebook and wherever. I am at Dr. Instagram. Drew Pinsky on Instagram. Do you think do, do First we... Lady of Love is available over on... Um... I like that. I was going to say that's sexy. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Instead of Susan's B-hole and... Oh, I like Susan's B-hole. That's funny. We're, 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 we're deteriorating. Now. We're gonna... now you need two pages. What about ultrafree.co? And um, I'm, I'm going to drop mine now. And the ultrafree on on Instagram has two A's for the ultra oh. free. Oh, good. Okay. The, yeah. we, we on Instagram. That out. Andrea DiMatteo on uh, on uh, on Twitter X whatever. All right, we're going. See you guys. We'll see you. Where today is Thursday, so we're back on Monday. Correct, Caleb. Monday at three o'clock. Is that correct? Let me double check. Yes, Monday at three okay. o'clock. We're doing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You guys next don't work week. on Friday. We're what? traveling. He's going Usually to. Usually it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. North North Carolina. Or Normally it's Tuesday, South Wednesday, Thursday. Carolina. It's Monday, Tuesday, Sh Wednesday. Next. Monday, no. Tuesday. Charles I don't think. Yeah. Do you Charlotte. guys bring the podcast on the road? We did. We would. We we do Kelly's it in New York. We have Wednesday. a little setup. And I yeah. noticed but that you do it from. We New have York. Dr. Kelly Victory sitting in for Drew. She's I like her. Yeah. Oh, she's great. So she's yeah, going like to be. Her. She's going to be sitting in a, a two Wednesdays in a row when we travel. Oh, nice. Going to New Orleans too, which will be really Ooh, fun. I have, I'm dying to take my daughter. She's never been. She's dying to go. It's so fun. I'm going to send her with you guys because <laughs> your kids are grown. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> She's really great. You guys will love her. Really? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, She's a ladies. Real freedom fighter. Continue this conversation at dinner. We'll see you Monday at 3 o'clock. <laughs> oh, we were still on. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor, and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800 273 8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help. The parallel economy has empowered us to care for our health, well-being, as well as longevity. 
Likewise for us pet parents who now have a place to go when it comes to keeping the family dogs, cats, even horses in the best shape possible. As a dog dad, I'm thrilled to be working with Pet Club 24-7, a company founded by two guys who lost dogs to serious conditions, including cancer. Pet Club 24-7 has an incredible array of products, including a line of supplements for humans, such as the Inforce Plus Corollius Versicolor and Inforce Corollius Versicolor with Reishi. My friend and colleague, Christina Ferrari, a cancer survivor herself, swears by it. When I was diagnosed, the doctor in the emergency room told me, you have two years to live. Oh boy. Along with the stem cell, I took these. I have been in remission for eight years now. For dogs, mush puppy treats are a fan favorite. Rex, oh boy. <laughs> he came right. Oh, there he is. They are also made with the Coriolis Versicolor Mushroom, which supports their immune system, according to hundreds of clinical studies. Here's Kristen Ludlow, National Vice President. That strain does matter. We do have the most potent strain, and we also extract it in a proprietary way. And that's why we've been having such wonderful experiences with these products. Mush puppies are made here in the U.S. There are no fillers. It's not addicting. Your dog can't accidentally overdose. Go to drdrew.com slash pet club 24-7 for a discount off the list price that is drdrew.com p-e-t-c-l-u-b 247 pet club 247